Hello and welcome, this is Roofmonger, and this video is going to be my impressions of the Grand Blue Fantasy Versus Beta as it currently stands. So before anything else, let's just get the big bugbear out of the room. This game is pretty as all get out. So this is an Arc System Works game and they've definitely honed the style, you know, from Guilty Gear XRD, Dragon Ball Fighters, now to this. This game looks downright stunning and beautiful. So now with that said, so once again, this is an Arc System Works game. This is the Unreal Engine. And let's just talk some of the very baby basics here before anything else. So one, it is a lobby based game. Uh, so very similar to say, you know, anything else they've worked on in the past, you know, uh, Guilty Gear XRD, uh, Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle, uh, even, you know, Dragon Ball Fighters lobby. Uh, this is a lobby based game and there's the arcade machines in the lobby and go play just like Blaze Blue Tag and all that. So that is the style. The beta did not have matchmaking. I have to assume the full version does because otherwise that's kind of crazy, right? Uh, but yeah, so the beta only had uh, the lobby system available and you have to sit your butt down at the arcade cabinet and wait for the next person to show up. There was no rematch option, which was a bit annoying. I gotta assume a rematch option also will be available in the full version. As soon as you won a game, you would just be booted back to the uh, lobby and then you'd have to like reconfirm to set up again. Uh, there was no direct rematch, you just kind of had to get booted back and then rematch every single time. That was a little annoying. I'm sure that'll be fixed in the proper main version of the game. Also, let's talk the netcode. So, uh, this is an Arc System Works game, as y'all know, and they... Uh, there's no nice way to say it. They're a little bit behind the times and they don't want to do no rollback netcode. So as far as the delay based netcode goes, it's good. For a delay based netcode is good. Most of my matches, most, not all, but most of my matches were usually two frame delay. Uh, Maybe a slightly improved version of whatever they have in Dragon Ball Fighters. Not quite sure. But the matches for the most part were playable unless, you know, they're just god awful. Uh, <laughs> But uh, for the most part, they were playable indeed. Um, maybe one day in the future, they'll get with the times, go to rollback netcode. But for now, it's a serviceable version of rollback, or sorry, serviceable version of delay based netcode. Now, onto the direct gameplay. So, the beta has no tutorial at all. Uh, what you're seeing right here is my very first game ever, and I'm just like literally floundering trying to figure out the baby basics, right? Uh, I know my motions and all that's so quarter circle forward, all that's a fireball, hey, just like I thought, right? Uh, but yeah, so as far as attack buttons go, this is a four button game. So this will be light, medium, heavy, and the trait button. I'm sure it has a direct name, but I'm just calling it the trait button. So light, medium, heavy, it's basically what you think. There's no real need to go into any further detail. Light, medium, heavy, and the usually deadly, uh, heavier attack has more range than light attack. And, you know, you can do it in the air, you can crouch and do that kind of stuff. All what you would expect. The trait is definitely unique to each character. So playing on a stock PlayStation 4 pad, the trait was the X button. And that is a unique character to character and they all have different things. So uh, the character I spent most of my time with, uh, Catalina, uh, mostly because she's... For lack of a more graceful term, she's kind of like Ryu. She was uh, definitely, she had a fireball, she had a rushing forward move, and she had a dragon punch, right? So she was kind of like Ryu, so I felt very comfortable playing her. Uh, her trait is basically a focus attack. She had a barrier that would absorb one move, and then she would go on to attack the enemy. Now, unlike most quote-unquote anime fighters, there is no Gatling system, there's no dial a combo, light doesn't go into medium, doesn't go into heavy, that kind of stuff. It is just single hit, so there is an auto combo system, and it's literally light, 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 or medium, 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 or heavy, heavy, heavy. That is the auto combo system, and all those are special cancelable, so you can go right into a special from there. Uh, but as far as like light, medium, heavy, or any of that kind of stuff, doesn't exist in this game. It's for the most part, unless you're doing light, uh, medium, or heavy auto combo, it's all single hits. Uh, there might be links, I don't know. I haven't uh, found any, at least in my uh, testing initially. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, very simplified in that regard. Now, one thing I found kind of fun, this game is both a back-to-block game and a block-button game. Uh, coming off playing a lot of Mortal Kombat recently, I actually found myself using the block button quite a bit, which is pretty cool. Uh, so you can choose whichever you prefer. So you can hold the button to block, or you can hit back to block. Now, the block button also has some defensive moves tied to it. Uh, it's sort of SNK style, if you will, a little bit like King of Fighters-ish. Uh, so you have both a forward roll, uh, it looks basically like they're dashing forward, and this is, for the most part, invincible except against throws. And you can go through strikes, you can go through uh, projectiles, that kind of stuff, to kind of gain space against the enemy against kind of, you know, obvious offense. 
You also have a spot dodge where you stand in place and dodge everything. Uh, if you play Dragon Ball Fighters, then you know Videl, the way she does her reflect, that's the exact same way. But yeah, it's a very much classic SNK style evasion in both the forward roll and the spot dodge. Now, you might notice these funky icons next to people's uh, portrait here. So, there are two methods of putting in special moves in this game. Uh, one I call basically easy operation, I don't know the actual term for it, and the more traditional way in fighting games. So, you might notice there is uh, four icons here. One is no arrow, and one has left, down, and right. So, all these are entered just by simply hitting that direction or neutral and the R1 button, assuming default PlayStation 4 controller. So these are basically kind of easy special moves. There's no other way to put it. Um, you can input the direction and bingo, bango, bongo, that's all there is to it. So uh, the one with the shield specifically, uh, that is her uppercut. And I actually found it a lot easier to uh, anti-air people with that than the quote unquote regular version of using, you know, forward, down, down, forward, punch. Uh, because basically, you know, this less input it takes less time to do it, right? So I found myself, uh, even though I was using the skill shots or whatever you want to call them, the normal motions for most of the time, I did find myself using the easy operation dragon punch a lot often more than just uh, the regular version, the one with the motion, because simply I had uh, less time to have to input it and I had more time to react with it, right? So it was a very strong technique. Now, also, all the special moves have cooldowns, which you can see based on the icons themselves now some recover basically right away like say her basic fireball uh but some don't recover right away and have a little bit of cooldown right there you just saw it drain out they're kind of grayed out now so i used my ex version of my lunge punch so if i did the regular version then it would just recover basically instantly so it's not a big deal but if i use the ex version which is much stronger and could cause combos in the corner then I am locked out for it uh, for just a little bit. I cannot use that move in any version, EX or regular, again, until the bar refills. So what's the difference between the easy operation kind of shortcut version and entering the move in manually like a more classic fighting game? Well, as far as I can tell, it seems to be the cooldown's a lot shorter uh, to near instantly if you do the manual version versus if you do uh, the easy operation version. It might do more damage. I'm legitimately not sure. Once again, there's no in-game guide. I had to figure a lot of this stuff out myself while I was playing the game. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, if you do the proper motion, the cooldown is much faster than if you didn't. Uh, once again, for the case of like Dragon Punches, hitting forward in the buttons a lot faster than hitting the motion in the button, so I was very okay with the cooldown, to be honest with you, because I just wanted to move right away, but that seems to be the big difference. Now, just like pretty much every fighting game ever made <laughs> in the modern era, you got your super bar, right? And the one thing about the super bar is... Uh, you have two versions of your super so one is the regular and you can see here like you build your percent as you go right your regular super and that's usually quarter circle forward quarter circle forward in one of your buttons and that's all well and good and if you're I believe it's 30% or less health your health will turn blue you basically have a desperation super unlock that'll do even more damage now one thing about supers is they do not carry between rounds so if you don't use your super bar in that round, you're never going to use it and you can't use it for anything else but supers or desperation supers. Your EX moves are not tied to it in any way, shape or form. So basically there's no reason not to burn the bar once you have it. Because if you don't take that opportunity, you're not going to get it back in the next round. You're not going to be able to save that bar. So keep that in mind. We showed this at the start of the video, but just for a frame of reference here, this is a level one super with all the animation playing out. So all the level ones still have a lot of animation as you can see here. And the next one here, this is the Desperation. This is the low health super. They can only do when you're low health. And obviously the Desperation supers do quite a bit more damage. But they just take the full super bar one way or the other. It doesn't really matter. So one doesn't cost any more than the other. Since you do not keep your super bar between rounds, consider them this. These guys are your round ender. These are your closer, right? This is how you're going to end up a lot of your rounds. Uh, most of your rounds, when you're fairly low health, you're probably going to have full bar anyways, right? So you're going for the big play. Hey, this is it. Now, also with that said, one thing I like, honestly, and it's a little thing. It's a very little thing. But if uh, the enemy's very low health anyways, and you kill them with the start of the super, you don't go into the full cinematic. So... If it's going to kill anyways, you don't need to waste, you know, another 5-10 seconds uh, just to see right there, as you can see. It'll just end the round, you win. Um, if it's not going to kill, then, you know, you get to see, oh, will it kill or not, right? Uh, but when it's just a situation of, yeah, he's definitely already dead, then it won't play out the whole cinematic. Now, combo-wise, mechanically, once again, we have the auto combo, and you go, like, basically auto combo into special mid-screen, and usually some sort of auto combo into EX special into kind of 
some sort of corner conversion off a of wild bounce or something like that, right? Uh, combo potential in this game is somewhat limited. Uh, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. But, you know, coming off, especially, you know, previous Arc System Works games, right? Uh, off, uh, you know, uh, Blaze Blue Tag or Dragon Ball Fighters or whatever. Uh, the fact that the combo system is so basic uh, is definitely a bit odd. Um, now, it's not to say the usual skill set that applies. This is a very neutral heavy game from what I've seen. Um, and your, a lot of your skill sets going to have to play into that. So if you have a bad neutral, you're probably going to be bad at this game straight up. Um... Uh, <laughs> But just to see uh, the fairly limited combo system, and it's, it's just a bit odd, I guess. I know this game is uh, very much designed for fighting game beginners in mind, and in that, I think it's actually a, kind of a rousing success between um, kind of the easy operation specials and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but uh, it's just, I don't know, considering their previous works, I just find it a bit odd, but it's definitely not a bad thing. So yeah, I guess my final thoughts is... Do I like it? Yeah, it's, it looks really cool. It plays fun. Once again, this rewards a very strong neutral game. Uh, the character uh, Catalina, I had a lot of fun with. It kind of rewards the playstyle I liked as I was learning as she went. Uh, just kind of very button heavy, just like, you know, a lot of pokes, a lot of back dashing, just a lot of playing lame. It's my favorite style of playing games, so I found that pretty fun. Uh, the one thing is I wonder about system level depth. Uh, not necessarily player depth, because once again, this is a neutral heavy game, and neutral takes more skill than anything else in fighting games. You can have your sickest setups, you can have your sickest combos, and if you suck at neutral, you're still going to be bad, right? Uh, if you don't have the fundamentals, you're still a bad player, despite how many crazy setups you know. And Lord knows I fought enough Fabukis over my life to tell, make sure that's the truth, right? Uh, but yeah, besides that, just the system level depth, um, I struggled to find any combos outside of uh, just the basic stuff like auto combo to special outside of the corner. In the corner you can get a little more fancy. Uh, I'm sure there are characters that can do it, just I didn't get to play every single character in uh, any kind of depth. But it's just something to think about anyways. I'm sure that people have figured out a lot more than I have in their time with it. I only get to play the late night version of the beta and get to play it earlier in the day. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff, you know, there's a lot of um, kind of universal fighting and concepts in here. There's universal overheads, there's throws, the spot dodge stuff I think uh, is really good and adds a lot of depth to the neutral as well. Uh, chip kills. Chip kills are very rare in modern fighting games now. Uh, basically, um, other than this game, which has them, and Mortal Kombat, uh, chip kills are usually relegated to like only supers only, and you can chip kill with regular moves in this game, so that's something. The net code is still delay based, but I guess it's a good one of those, even though it's certainly not preferable to me. Uh, but it's, I don't know, I wish it wasn't delay based, but it worked. Most of my games were very playable, so I guess I'll give it a pass for that. But yeah, long story short, if you want an easy, accessible fighting game, this is definitely it. Uh, and not to say there's no depth anywhere else, because once again, it's a heavy neutral game, so a lot of just spacing and all that kind of skill set is going to be very important. So overall, I'd say very fun experience. I had a lot of fun with it, hey, and I look forward to playing more. Anyways, my friends, that is it for this video, so thank you very much for watching. I hope this video has found you well, and I suppose go out and try Grand Blue Fantasy Versus.